Okay, so we're doing uh, 5.7 partial fractions. 5.7 had three types of, uh, of integration methods in it, right? The trig powers, the trig substitutions, and partial fractions. And so um, I, I, I think we have a couple of more methods to go uh, in terms of getting all of the methods done. And then Chapter 8 is our final method, which almost is the universal it will work when everything else fails but it's so complicated that we we push it off to the end uh, to, to work on it Lucy you're late for class come on get your notebook out <laughs> my dog <laughs> um, so I put up uh, the Shams outline for this and this is probably the the book is pretty good too on this section okay uh, but I'm gonna just so in blackboard in our class, I'm not sharing this screen yet, but I'll, once I open the show, I'm so. Um, so in Blackboard, in our class, in the handouts section, uh, I put the Shams partial fraction. So I have three uh, pieces, all from Calc two. So all of our Calc two methods are up on on, on handouts there for Shams. Um, I, I probably won't do it for every single section. But these sections are, are, are good uh, to have these extra problems in. And so you can see that there are uh, um, three cases. So case one, uh, where I'm going to split my fraction, uh, I'm going to factor, and I'm going to have linear factors. So mx plus b's are my factors. Okay. So if, if you can see, I have an x squared minus 4, and then I, I factor that into x minus 2 and x plus 2, and then I'm separating the, right, I'm undoing the adding fractions. So case 1 is I have linear factors, okay? Case 2, I have uh, repeated linear factors. So if, if I factor this particular piece out, right, then I'm going to have an x plus 1 and an x minus 1 and and then another factor of x minus 1. Oh, here it is. So there's a factor of x plus 1 and two factors of x minus 1. So repeated linear factors. Okay? Repeated linear factors. So obviously the first step is to factor, right? And there actually might be a, a step before that. If my power of my numerator is higher than or equal to the power of the denominator, the leading power, then I must I should long divide first, right? So really, two two uh, first thing to look for if the so so meaning, look at my power upstairs here in, in number three. It's a you can see the screen, right? You can see can you see my mouse moving on the three x plus five there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So so the power upstairs is the power of one, and the power downstairs is, is cubed, right? So no need to long divide, all right? But that's what you have to check first. Can I long divide, right? If the power upstairs is higher than or equal to the power, the leading powers downstairs, you need the long divide first. Okay. So then factor. Okay. So we, we get to do all that great factoring again. Let me look at the next case. Um, so, and I, I typically will put on a case one or a case three. I like case three even better. So case three is really what I'm going to test on. I can't test on every case, right? So case three is I have distinct quadratic factors, unfactorable quadratic factors, right? So uh, here's an x cubed minus one. That factors into an x minus one and an x squared plus x plus one. And, and, and so there it's now factored. So I have a linear factor and a quadratic factor, and that's going to change my choice for the numerator. Okay, but again, notice the upstairs power is, is an x squared, so it's second power. Downstairs is an x cubed, third power, so no need to long divide. But there will be problems where you have to long divide first. I think there's one in web assign. Okay, so just that's a little note in your formula sheet, right, um, for, for this. And then case four is you have repeated quadratic factors, non-factorable quadratic factors, factors but I'm, I'm not going to do that in case four. Okay. 
So lots of problems here in Shams, which is nice. Um, you kind of want to, you don't want to be copying problems down. You want to be doing the work and then taking a peek if you get stuck, right? You want to, you want to do the work. And then if you get stuck, see what they, what they got for their coefficients kind of thing, right? And that will make more sense when I start doing some problems. But, um, uh, you know, don't, um, don't just copy the work. Don't just copy your notes over. Take the problem, do the problem on your own, and then look back at your notes and see if you got it right. You know, that, that, that type of thing. Uh, uh, again, it, it's real easy just to say you get it. But when you actually do the work, you'll make mistakes, and then you'll realize, you know, how you got to prepare for the test and all of that type of thing. So, um, you know, we just don't want to lie to ourselves about it. We want to make sure we can do it, right? Um, so, so I want to talk theory a little bit, and then we'll jump into some problems, okay? So I'll leave you the Sean's problems to do on your own. Uh, uh, but we want to talk about, uh, in general, right? In general, um, uh, and, and, and let's say, Let's, let's say that um, if I have, I, I would not have a problem like this, right? You agree? I would not, I would not have a problem like this. Okay. Why, why won't I have a problem like this? This will not be a partial fraction problem because I have to long divide first, right? And so this one I would get... Uh, what, if I long divide that one, right? What do I get here? I get uh, I get a one x squared minus. Uh, so I get I get one plus one over x squared minus one. Okay. So 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 this would be a partial fraction problem, not the first, not here in red. This would not be a partial fraction problem. That's a long division problem. And now this integration is easy, and then this one is my partial fraction problem. Okay. So uh, could this one, you, you with me here? Could this one be a partial fraction problem? Could this problem be a partial fraction problem? Yeah, this one could be because I, I don't have to long divide. Now notice in the two problems that could be partial fraction problems here and here, what are my powers? What are, what's my highest power I could possibly have as a par partial fraction problem here is, is, is a first power upstairs, right? The first power upstairs. And so in, in both of these cases, right, I know 1 over, sorry, 1 over x squared minus 1 is the same as uh, 1 over x plus 1 x minus 1. Uh, or uh, x over x squared minus 1 is x over x plus 1, x minus 1, right? And so I'm saying I have to have, since I'm going to split them into two fractions, right? Right, so there's, we're talking about two different problems here. Uh, so 1 over x squared minus 1 is now something over x plus 1 and something over x minus 1 right? They have to be a combination of linears to get a, a, a numerator of one. So, so they're just going to be linear coefficients in the numerator. In fact, the x's had better cancel, right? If you think about that. So the key here is, though, I'm saying um, upstairs have to be numbers only in order to get an LCD here and get my uh, uh, values of my uh, values of A and B. Same thing over here, right? This has got to be some A over x plus one plus some B over x minus one, and they're again linear combinations of a linear factor. They have to be linear combinations of linear factors in order to get a value 
that's not a power bigger than x. Is this, is this making sense at all? If I had something here like an x, well, when I multiplied it to get my LCD, I'd have some kind of x squared. And that can't happen. Because I can't have an x squared problem in my partial fraction problem because that would be a long division problem. So there's no way I could be multiplying. Right? Think about this. Right? What, what's going to happen in this first case? I'm going to get an a times x minus 1 plus a b times x plus 1 all over the x plus 1 times x minus 1. Right? When, remember doing this in, in pre-cal, all these rational function things? In order for me uh, to not go to a higher power than x, I certainly can't have an x squared involved. Right? So, so that, that's what I'm hinting at, that these, when my factors are linear, I must have a constant uh, numerator. When my denominator factors are linear, I can only have a constant uh, fa uh, factor in the numerator. In fact, it will always be one power lower. So when I have a quadratic factor, then I have to have a linear factor in the numerator. Right? I have to have a linear in the numerator. All right. This is the part where I'm going, I'm not going to prove it, because I don't even know if I can prove it, because it's, it's kind of obvious from when we learned how to add fractions together, algebraic fractions together. Right? Uh, I, I have to think about, if I'm multiplying a linear by x, I'm going to get x squared terms. If I'm multiplying a, a quadratic by x, I'm going to get an x cubed term. Right? And yes, they could cancel out, but it's not that likely that they're going to cancel out. Okay. All right, let's, let's do, uh, let's do this second problem here as our first example. So I've got, uh, the integral. So this is, uh, partial fractions, right? Case one. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares about the numbers? Case one, linear factors only, right? Non-repeating linear factors. All right, so first thing, can I long divide? No, don't need it. Okay, nice. Check that first. Second thing, factor. So this thing factors into x over x plus 1, x minus 1 dx, right? And so now we want to move off to the side, move away from the integral, and then figure out how to split this, this fraction into what's called partial fractions, right? So I've got x over x plus 1 times x minus 1. I have non-repeated factors. I'm going to trust Robert that this means I need uh, some number over the first factor and some number over the second factor. What's nice about this is after I get the values for A and B, it should completely click. It should be back to the pre-cal class or the Algebra 2 class I even possibly had in high school, where I, I was combining fractions, combining uh, rational functions, right? Uh, so on this particular one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply every term by the LCD, right? So, and I'm going to try and not skip a step at first. Uh, so I'm going to write my original problem in black. And then my, my LCD in red. Right, and then I see that a bunch of things will, will go away. And I like to use, you know, I'll use a double strike through to cancel things. When when I'm canceling things, I'll use a single strike through and then a double strike through and then a triple strike through, that type of thing. So that first step is, is pretty obvious, I think. But then I want to be patient here and I want to rewrite. And this is what I call my 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 generating equation. This is what's going to generate the values of a and b for me for with me picking any value i want for for x 
right? I can pick any value I want for x here, right? When this, in this particular box, there's no domain issues. I can pick any value of x I want and, and then process a value for a and b. How are we doing here? We okay? Uh, Professor, why are we only um, multiplying that with the numerator? Uh, because I have an equal sign, I have that freedom. Uh, when I don't have an equal sign, I got to do LCDs. But when I have an equal sign, I can just what, what we used to call clear fractions. I can just get rid of all my denominators. And, and do, I do that by making sure I multiply through by the LCD. Because of that equal sign, I can multiply everything by the same thing, right? Uh, yeah. When I don't have an equal sign, I can only multiply by, by one, right? Something over itself. So, yeah, that's, that's the key there. So, okay. yeah, okay, good, Ash, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yep. So, so now I'm going to pick values of x as 1 and negative 1. Right, and it will be obvious, and you'll see the more complicated ones. There'll be two or three numbers that are obvious, and one is not obvious. You can pick anything you want in that case, right? So, so when a is one, what do I get? I get uh, x equals two uh, b. I'm oh, sorry, one equals two b. Right, because x is one. Right, sorry, not when a is one. Damn it, Robert. When x is one. <laughs> when x is one. I get uh, 1 equals 0a plus 2b, so b is 1 half. Pretty easy, right? And now I'm going to pick x is negative 1 when x is negative 1. And again, I'm using that same box, that generator. Uh, I get negative 1 equals negative 2a plus zero, so I get a is one half. Did I make a mistake there? So you're just setting x equal to the numbers that are in the denominator? Yeah, any, any, exactly. Yeah, you're going to pick those. Every time? Yep. Okay. And, and, but sometimes it won't be enough. So sometimes I might have to pick x is 2, or x is some, any number I want. Remember, it's, you're, it's total freedom here. There's no domain issues in this box, right, this generating box. Uh, nope, this is right. This is good. So now I have uh, my, my integral of x over x squared minus 1 dx is now the integral of 1 half over x plus 1 plus 1 half over x minus 1. And certainly I can split that into two integrals. Once again, once I get the value of a and b, it's really easy for you to say, oh, yeah, it works, right? That definitely works. And are there more answers for A and B? No. Um, so, and each of these is an LN, right? So this is one half of the LN of absolute value of X plus one plus the LN of absolute value of X minus one plus C, and I certainly can make this look a little bit nicer, right? Um, when I'm adding, when I'm adding two fractions, when I'm sorry, when I'm adding two logs, I can multiply the arguments, right? So this is one half of the ln of absolute value of x squared minus one. I, I could certainly put that one half in as a power, but I'd have to keep the absolute value. So I think this is this is my answer right here. Could we have gotten here by using the u sub? 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This one could have been dub done with a U sub, and you'll see I get the same answer. Yes. Yes. But the ones that you're going to have are cannot, will not be, the ones that I'll say do by partial fractions, uh, you're going to have to do by partial fractions. Uh, so you're right, Chuck, this one, I, I, I just made this one up off the top of my head and I forgot that, I forgot to check my checklist. But remember, sometimes when I miss something on my checklist, it gets solved by an, another problem. It gets solved by another process, right? And then if it doesn't, I'm either waiting for chapter 8 or I missed it, right? Either I'm waiting for chapter 8 or I missed the problem. Could you slow down? Yes. Thanks. I just had a cup of coffee, Josh, so it could be the coffee kicking in. No problem. So the problems in the book I like here, or in MindTap, same thing, are 19 to, I think 19 to uh, 35, 19 to 35, and 5.7, 5 5.7, 5 19 to 35. And then I've got the, the Shalom's outline there for you, right? And again, on the test, I'll say solve this by partial fractions. And it's usually case three. I, don't, I, don't, I typically don't bother with case one. It's too easy. Case two is also too easy. Case three is not, not so easy sometimes. So let me just update the schedule here real quick. And Josh, let me know when you're there or if you need a, 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 a different Zoom. So I'm just right now, and you can't see it's I'm doing it off screen here. I'm going into our schedule and updating the schedule uh, for today. We're doing partial fractions and I'm saying homework five and uh, 5.7 number 19 to 35. Yeah, and I have the shawms there, but I'm not, I'm not writing out that I have shawms on the schedule. They're just in the handouts. They are optional, right? You don't have to do them. Um, uh, I think the book is decent enough for, for the partial fractions. I think the book is not good for trig subs. So do, do some shams with the trig, trig subs. Um, and we've already done every trig power problem you could possibly do. Uh, Right, because I'm restricting the powers to not be too too large. All right, let's do one uh, with a repeated linear, and you'll, you'll see the subtlety of it. Right. Um, Josh, you okay? I am going to steal one from Sean's just because. Okay, thank you, Josh. Just because I, I don't feel like my improvising chops are up to it today. All 
Uh, so a repeated linear. So this is number two in the Shams, which is fine. So Shams number two. And we're looking at uh, the integral of x plus one over x cubed plus x squared minus six x. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not a repeated linear. Sorry about that. Sorry, this is number five. Come on, Robert, get with it. 3x plus 5. I got an x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. Okay. So this is repeated linears. So first of all, long division not needed, right? I got an x cubed downstairs and x upstairs. I want to factor this thing. Um, for me, um, I can see factor by grouping. I can see that one would give me a zero. There's lots of ways to do this particular piece, right? So, so um, I would probably graph this and see where I hit a zero. So it's pretty clear that I hit a zero at one, and I'll do synthetic, right, uh, to generate. So I don't know how long it's been since you've done synthetic division. But if you can factor it, factor it, right? I don't care how you do it. So I'm going to use synthetic division. I see if I put in 1 into this, it would give me a 0, right? So I know 1 is a 0. So that's why I'm doing synthetic division here. So I bring down the first. I multiply and add. I multiply and add. I multiply and add. And if I get a 0 at the end, then this is another factor, right? So I know here x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 is a factor of x minus 1. That's from the green. And a factor of, of, of x squared minus 1. And that's from the blue. And then, and now Sorry, I... Sorry, what's the, what's the blue? What do you mean? Yeah, that leftover. So, you know, I started at x cubed and I mm -hmm. reduced, I reduced down to x squared. So this is an x squared term. This is an x term. This is a constant term. So if you, Eleanor, if you haven't done synthetic in a while or ever, you don't have to. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, you're just saying that since you ended on a zero, it tells you that. That the other piece is the, also a factor. Yes. That the first number. Exactly. The, the, this this whole piece is a factor. Okay. Now, oh. I, yeah. Now, I didn't have to do that, right? X cubed minus X squared minus X plus 1, I could do by grouping. So I could take out an X squared from the first two terms, and I could take out a minus 1 from the second two terms, and see that I got a repeated factor of X minus 1, and then the leftovers of X squared minus 1. So either any way you want to do it is fine with me. This is not a class on factoring. Uh, you can look up synthetic division, you can, you know, um, so, but anyway, this is, uh, I can see that my x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 is now an x minus 1 times another x minus 1 times an x plus 1, right? So now I'm just factoring that last piece, which I, I can, I can do from, just from memory of all of those factoring things we learned. So this uh, particular uh, fraction now, so 3x plus 5 over x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1, it's going to turn into, and I'll put that, that single linear first, so I need an x plus 1, so I need a over an x plus 1. I need a b over an x minus 1, and I need a c over an x minus 1 quantity squared, because... I have a factor of x plus 1. I have a factor of x minus 1. I also have a factor of x minus 1 quantity squared, right? I don't know which one I need to get my numerator. So, but I want to make sure every uh, every one of those 
factors is, is represented. It's almost like when you have a, 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 a factor, uh, a downstairs of 2 times 2. Well, you have a factor of 2 for sure, and you have a factor of 4, right? So you want to make sure both of those are represented when you're, when you're combining your fractions. It's a little, this is a little bit of a, trust me, you'll see it. <laughs> this is a little bit of a, a strange situation where it's, once we get the values of A, B, and C, you'll agree with me. And you have to kind of trust me that this is what we did when we did common denominators. So when I had repeated linear factors, if they're repeated twice, you see what happens. What if they're repeated three times? I need another D plus that factor cubed, right? So I'm going to keep uh, doing this process here. So a little bit, a little bit hard to trust me on this. Am I right? You're like, what? A little bit like, what the hell's going on? But if you have that repeated factor, when you do your LCDs, you make sure that repeated factor is, is represented as a square. And then as a safety, we represent the repeated factor as a, as a single power as well, because it could be a contributor. All right, so how do we generate this now? We know we're going to get a 3x plus 5. It's going to be equal to... Um, so now the, the, the key to, to realize here is the LCD is x minus 1 squared times x plus 1, right? So if I kind of sneak that in here, You see, I'm going to get a times x minus 1 quantity squared. I'm going to get uh, one of those factors will cancel on the b term. So I get plus b times x minus 1, x plus 1. And then I get c times x plus 1. So I kind of am shortcutting that step a little bit there, cheating it as much as I wrote it out in detail last time. I'm skipping a little bit there. Josh, how am I doing here, speed-wise? Okay, just keep me keep me on the right. Keep me on the meter. Make sure I'm not going too fast for. Them. So this particular one, I can obviously use a one. X is one. I can use an X is negative one, but then I'm going to have to use something else, and it's totally my choice. I I, I could pick a two. I, it doesn't matter doesn't matter what I do but I, I've got to right I've got to do um, three at least three values of X here and sometimes these things will turn into systems <laughs> it's the problems get worse and worse they turn into systems and then you got to solve a system of equations and, and all of that but but the nice thing is, this, this is not difficult. This is pretty easy to do. It's stuff we've done before. You just don't, we're doing it in reverse a little bit. So this is my generator. So why don't we uh, go individually and figure out our values of A, B, and C.
So once you get values of A, B, and C, let me let me hear them, just so we can get some. Charlie, you got them all? Same as mine. Yes, same as mine, Charlie. I just want to make sure I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> Anybody else get? Slow down, Robert. Ash, you there yet? Nice. Same as mine. I'm trying to find out if I, <laughs> I'm a Pisces. I need to know. <laughs> Am I correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Eleanor, you, you got there? Good. It, what's nice about this, you can see the symmetry of the A and B, right? I, I, you can see, wh what am I going to generate... What am I going to generate from this piece and this piece that I don't want? What, what am I going to generate there that I don't want? What, what term am I going to generate out of those two pieces that I don't want? The middle term that would end up getting... Not, not, not the middle term. The leading term, right? What, what's the leading term going to be in both of those? X squared. X squared. And, and so I need those X squareds to cancel because look at, look at my highest power of my actual numerator. It's X. So I don't want any X squared terms in there. So I can see my, my positive one half x squared and my negative one half x squared are going to cancel there. So it's a it's a real subtlety there. It's very it's very hard to when you're introducing this topic. To, it's really difficult to kind of say, well, why am I using just constants when when I've got these linear factors? Because I don't want to over generate powers, right? And so, so it's, it's a little bit clearer after you start generating these things that why are we picking, you know, constants for, for linear factors? Because I don't want to create a bunch of quadratic factors, right? I don't want to create x squareds. Well, the rest of it is, is pretty simple, right? 
the rest of this is 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 pretty simple now. Uh, can I move on? Does anybody need another minute? So we're okay to move on. So so we're going back to that original problem, right? And let, and let me just uh, let me just go jump to my next page here. But if you need me to go back or if I'm going going ahead too early, let me know. Okay, I have plenty of time today to get this done. Uh, we're not doing anything else today. We're doing this partial fraction piece, and then. Uh, 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 and then you have some time, right? You'll have a little bit of extra time in class today. You could stick around and ask questions, or you can, you know, use the rest of the class time to get back onto some of that homework, right? Um, so I'm just going to a new page just so I have a, a clean page here. Uh, again, this is uh, Shams number five. Sorry, Sean's number number three. And what's nice about having this this Sean's piece is I, I I have the values of A, B, and C. So before I go do the integration, I can double check that I have the A, B, and C correct. Same thing with uh, Symbol Lab. I can go put this integral into Symbol Lab and see what it generates from my A, B, and C before I go and finish the problem. Right? You don't want to spend an hour on a problem when the first part of it is wrong and then that all that rest of the time you're you're spending is is kind of wasted a little bit right so we want to work smart this semester right so i've got 3x plus 5 over x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 dx all with respect to x and we we've turned that already into three integrals right uh we got Um, uh, we got the uh, a which was uh, one half right so one half of x plus one dx minus b one half of x minus one all with respect to x and then finally that value of c which was a four over x minus one quantity squared dx So I've got two U subs downstairs and then a U sub inside here. Right? Do you have to, when you write it out like this, do you have to keep A, B, and C over the factors that we yes, have to deal yes, with? Yes, because so so just and and you can do them in any order you want, okay? But if you switch them, your A is going to be different from my A. Right? So so you just keep them organized as you as you did them. Does that make sense, Eleanor? Wait, over the same exactly. denominator. Yes, exactly. Okay. So if you had started with the x minus 1 downstairs and put it over and, and had a over it, your a would have been the negative 1 half. <coughs> so so just, just make sure you, you right. keep yeah. consistent through the whole problem. That's all. Uh, so the first two, I, I don't really have to do too much to. We, we can see that those are LNs. Is that is that fair? I've got a half of the LN of the absolute value of X plus 1 minus 1 half of the LN of the absolute value of X minus 1. Right? Those, those two are pretty simple. The next one is a U sub. Right? If U is X minus 1, then DU is DX. So I have uh, uh, 4 over... Uh, u squared du and that's just a power rule
sorry, I made a mistake. That's a subtraction in between, should, should be division, sorry. Sorry about that. What do you think about this? A little bit easier, right? Is it not too bad, right? Looks like the initial factoring is probably going to be the most difficult part. Yeah, that that, that does sound right, David. Uh, you know, if you didn't have me as your Algebra 2 teacher or your pre-cal teacher who was stressing all of this stuff, because it knew that would be the issue in calc. Yeah, so you might have to review some factoring. And I like factoring by graphing uh, the function and then seeing where the roots are and then doing synthetic. Um, you know, but you don't have to do it that way. I don't really see me giving you some crazy things that you have to factor. I don't, I don't see that happening. But, you know, if it's been a while since you've done all that, that factoring, it, it, that, you know, why would you remember that stuff, right? you got other things to do, <laughs> right? So, so it's just about refreshing your memory and putting some kind of, if you're worried about it, putting something on your formula sheet that will remind you of processes for factoring or, you know. And again, I'm, I'm probably doing... Maybe I'm up to 10 or 12 pages of, of notes that I want to put on my formula sheet. And then I'm going to shrink them down to six pages per side and print out a single sheet, you know. So, you know, but you're, you're free to just write small if you want to. And I'm okay if, if you use a magnifying glass on the test, that's fine. I haven't talked about calculators yet. I don't know. Is it does everyone have a TI eighty three or eighty four? Anybody not have a TI eighty three or eighty four? You can send me a chat. I'll keep it private if you don't want anyone to know. Um, if we all have calculators, I'll allow a calculator on the test. If we don't, then I'll say no calculators. But I need to know. Right? So if you don't have a TI eighty three or an eighty four, let me know. If everyone does have it, I'll start teaching some processes on it so that you can use it during the test. Typically, if we were on campus and you didn't have one, you could borrow one from the, from the learning center. Uh, but since we can't go on campus right now, I know that's going to be changing very soon, but Okay, we're ready for the the uh, the doozy. We're ready. We'll do an easy one, and then we'll do a, a, a difficult one for level three, where I have uh, non-repeated linear factors and non-repeated unfactorable quadratic factors, right? So this is case three, and I, I typically put a case three on every semester. Um, uh, so this is an easy one. This is, uh, we've got an x squared, 
over uh, 1 minus x to the fourth dx. So this is uh, no, lo no longer vision needed. Right, just a couple in Shams where you need long division, and there's a couple in the book where you need long division. Um, so make sure you practice one of those. I don't, I don't typically put one on. Um, uh, so I want to, I want to factor this piece, right? So I know uh, downstairs I have what one minus x squared and one plus x squared, right? And then 1 minus x squared factors into 1 plus x and 1 minus x. And so I see I need an a over a 1 plus x, a b over a 1 minus x, and a cx plus d over 1 plus x squared. So I need a... <clears throat> so over my linears, I have constants. Over my fat quadratic, I have a linear. I need an mx plus b over my quadratic. And there's my generator, which is hideous. And I'll give you a minute to catch up, or mustard, whatever condiment you like, mayo. That was my basketball nickname when I was in high school. They call me Mayo because I was dangerous if left open. <laughs> and I'm white, yes, yes, because I'm white too. <laughs> How we do? We, we're ready for this generator? It's pretty nasty, this one. So we're going to obviously use, and, and will I always use a is 1 and a is negative, x is 1 and x is negative 1? No, I'm just picking those problems with this simple uh, factoring for now. Um, I don't want the factoring to be the hindrance of it, right? I want us to get to the calculus. So we just need the values of A, B, C, and D. And in this particular one, I, I, I probably need four values of X, because I have four values, right? A, B, C, and D I have to find. Uh, but obviously a 1 and a negative 1 will, will work for me, and then I'm going to have to, you know, it looks like a zero would, would be nice. That would kill a lot of things, and then some other value. So so let's let's take some independent time here and, and see if we can figure out A, B, C, and D. So this one, I'm going to generate a, a system.
definitely made a mistake somewhere. It can be on air. Hmm? It can be on air. I got, I got the uh, air 1 over 4. I don't know. Positive 1 over 4? Yeah. Yeah, I got the same. Yeah, so did the book. Okay, so I screwed up. It's okay. Life goes on. I'm just going to cheat and say what the book got. <laughs> A is one-fourth. B is one-fourth. Uh, C is zero. And D is... one-half. Negative one-half. A minus one-fourth. I, that's what I got too, but the book doesn't. So I, I must have okay. I must have screwed up somewhere. Right. I try and, and make all of these uh, uh, integers on the test, except for last semester's midterm when you see that. Um, but I realized I, I screwed it up, made it too difficult. So I, I typically will try and make everything come out to be integers and easy to deal with. Not that a one-fourth is difficult to deal with, but... Let me give you a few more minutes. See if you can, let me see if I can figure out where my mistake is. It's not easy to see the mistake. Oh, yeah, I can see, I can see my mistake is right here. I should have gotten positive 4a, not negative 4a. And then that screwed everything else up. So easy to make mistakes, you just got to be patient, right? Double check. I'm going very fast, way too fast. Don't need to go, I, I'll get plenty of time on the exams. And then, like, so let's say you get these coefficients wrong, um, but didn't do all the calculus right. You know, I'm, I'm not going to let that fail you. I doubt it will even stop you from getting the A, right? So um, just work diligently, patiently, right? Be organized. Try not to be distracted. Um, I do allow you to listen to music while you take your test. Um, you know, sometimes that's an issue because, like, all my music is on my phone. But I have the phone watching me, so I can't listen to the music uh, on there. So, But if you have a workaround on that. I'm also okay if you have music live in your room, out, you know, without headphones. But then whenever you unmute yourself, you have to turn the music off first, right? So that's a little bit, a little bit distracting, I think, but all right, once we have, does anybody need another minute? I, I would, I would just encourage you to say, okay, stop, 
if you're still working on the coefficients, stop and just accept the coefficients we have written here. And then let's let's work on the, the calculus now, because there's a little subtle subtle thing ha going to happen here, right? Um, so we had uh, a over 1 plus x, right? So we have 1 fourth over 1 plus x dx. Well, that's just the ln again. Uh, and then we have the b over uh, uh, 1 minus x. Now that's a subtle u sub there, right? There's a, there's a u sub there. When I, when I need a negative 1 dx. And then I finally have uh, minus uh, 1 half over uh, 1 plus x squared dx. And you can see the arctan there. And so there's that subtlety of what's going to happen. So you're going to get an arctan out of uh, this unfactorable quadratic. Right. So the first one is, is 1 fourth of the ln of the absolute value of 1 plus x. Right? No problem. The second one, I need a u sub, and I need a negative 1 dx, right? So I'm going to get the opposite of 1 fourth of the ln of the absolute value of 1 minus x. So just a little subtle u sub there. And then finally, minus 1 half of the arctan of x, all plus c. And on, on this particular piece, I can simplify that, that ln, right? I've got the 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x, all in absolute value. And there's our, there's our final work. So we're going to do one more problem, but let's take another little break. Okay, let's let's do about uh, so come back at 11:15.